Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us again. I'm going to have a conversation with Dr. Vivian Hernandez Trujillo. She's uh, joining us here as a pediatric allergist, and she's going to talk about some potential challenges that children with life-threatening food allergies may face as they, well, return to school during this COVID-19 pandemic. Welcome to the program, Dr. Hernandez Trujillo. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Neil. It's a pleasure to be with you. I mentioned, of course, that you are a pediatric allergist. Give us a brief background, and um, let's talk about how the back-to-school landscape looks different. Absolutely. So I'm, I am a pediatric allergist. I take care of children with life-threatening food allergy. And actually, I'm a mom of two girls with life-threatening food allergy, and I'm a patient myself. So it's something very near and dear to my heart, um, obviously, that, that we all live with. Um, I will say it is going to be a different year. So we have not only the COVID pandemic, um, but the environment in the school will probably look different for many children. So there's different possibilities. You know, the, the CDC has actually recommended that children eat in their classrooms. They may not be going to to a lunchroom where they may have a separate table for food allergies with their desk socially distanced. And that's going to look different for, for some children. Some children may not be going back to the brick and mortar school building. They may be going to someone's house where they're in a, in a small pod. Mm-hmm. Um, so depending on where the children are, I think there are definitely going to be um, some changes to what they're, they're accustomed to. Oh, well, you are a patient, as are both of your children. How prevalent are these life-threatening food allergies here in the United States? So each year, an estimated 56 million children go back to school to attend elementary, middle, and high schools across the U.S. And of these, 8% will have food allergies. So that's one in every 13 school children, or depending on the size of the classroom, it may be two to three children per classroom. So it, it is it is common. So you've got all of these other, the regular things that go on with kids, um, and you've got your children who have these allergies, and you've got COVID-19. Uh, as a parent... How do you how do you even begin to navigate that? You know, I, I've, I've been having this conversation with families um, since March, really, when this all started. And and I think the most important thing that I can say as, as a fellow parent is, you know, number one, to reassure people, I think the most important thing is to be prepared. And as parents of children with food allergy, we're actually very used to being prepared. This is no different than other years in the sense that we're going to speak to the schools. We'll speak to the teachers. If there's a school nurse, we will have very open communication and collaborate with them. They may, you know, they may appreciate some help having extra wipes or something to ensure the safety of our children, whatever it may be. Um, and having an emergency, you know, anaphylaxis emergency plan in place, which we would have any other year. I think this year it would be even more important ensuring that we have um, our, our medications, our epinephrine auto injector, like AviQ with refills, so that if something were to happen, everybody has a plan of action and we know what course to take. When it comes to symptoms of these life threatening food allergies, are any of these symptoms less severe or so, um, I guess, non profound that they could be mistaken for symptoms of COVID 19 or flu or cold? Or is it something that once it happens, you know full well what's going on and there is no mistake? That's actually a really excellent question, and I haven't been asked that. As we know, the symptoms of and signs of COVID-19, we've actually really begun to understand them only since March, since it's a novel virus. Um, the different, there's many different sim- symptoms, which may include things like nasal congestion, cough. Um, and, and I think when we talk about children with food allergy, the most important thing is that anyone who is responsible or around them be aware, number one, when it's time to eat making sure that they're monitoring the, the common symptoms. And there's a lot of different symptoms, but it could be skin, maybe itching or hives, uh, respiratory. It might be a cough or a new um, runny nose that wasn't there. GI symptoms are often missed. Those are the, the gastrointestinal symptoms that include, you know, a vomiting, nausea, diarrhea that weren't present before mm-hmm. the child ate. So I think when we think about the signs and symptoms, there could be some crossover, but the most important thing is keeping in mind um, really the relation to when, for example, they ate something or there was a food allergen in the classroom that they may have somehow um, been exposed to. And just being aware that, that, you know, the temporal association, I think that's very important. 
How is it? Um, how do you tr- um, relate to young children the importance of um, making sure that what they eat they're sure of, especially in school? So one of the things that I spend a lot of time with my patients and, you know, as soon as they can talk, it might be, it depends on the child as early as 18 months or two years or two and a half years, depending on the child, you can teach them to say, you know, no, whatever their food is. So if they're allergic to nuts, they can say no nuts or always asking. One thing I kind of role play at times in my office is I'll say to the child, okay, I'm going to give you a new food and I try to hand them something and they need to, to ask me, does this have nuts? Does this have egg? Whatever it might be that they're allergic to. And as if the child is able to communicate, that's just an extra layer of protection. If not, they can have um, different identifiers, bracelets, or different identifiers so that whoever it is um, that's responsible for them, whatever adult is there, will know, you know, this child has an allergy. I need to be aware of it. Are all of these life-threatening food allergies treated with epinephrine auto-injectors or some other type of delivery device? Yeah, so the the gold standard, um, especially we have learned a lot about anaphylaxis, is absolutely epinephrine auto-injector. Epinephrine is what will save your life. There's no other medication that will save your life in, in the event of anaphylaxis. So the gold standard, the first go-to medication is the epinephrine auto-injector. AviQ, is that some a different type or a, a more efficient or a better type of auto-injector, or is it simply different than the ones that we're uh, traditionally used to? So AviQ is the only compact epinephrine auto-injector with a voice instruction system. Uh-huh. It's compact about the size of a credit card and the thickness of a cell phone, and, and it will give you voice instructions, um, and then the needle automatically retracts, and it even reminds you at the end to call 911. Is this connected with an app where you can monitor it via phone or anything like that, or is it a standalone unit? It's a standalone unit. Where can our listeners go and learn some more uh, about AviQ and uh, about um, these allergies and some of the tools that uh, parents can use to ensure the safety of their kids, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic? Absolutely. I recommend that that um, the listeners go to Avi, that's A-U-V-I-Q.com. There are very good resources on um, treatment of life-threatening food allergy and just about anaphylaxis and food allergies in general. Doctor, I appreciate you joining us here this evening on Health Professional Radio. It's a pleasure. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Vivian hernandez Trio. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au.